Got a Panasonic microwave oven. This is one of the inverter series. Um, it's a genius, about a 2003, but uh, they've all stayed pretty much the same over the last many years. And all the inverter units are basically the same. This one I picked out of the recycle bin and I haven't even checked it out yet. It's been sitting on the floor for a while. Let's uh, get this one look at it and see if it works. I have here an, a Panasonic inverter microwave oven that's dead. Now this may not be repaired, depending on what the problem with it is. If it's a problem with the magnetron or the inverter, I'm not going to repair it because it's just not economical to repair. But let's see what has failed on this unit. Now because these units did have very high voltage in them and they were very hazardous to service, they all use security type screws, which I have to get out. And I don't have the exact security bit for this, so I'll have to work at this a bit to get this one open. Generally, you could just use a small, like a one of these Xylite red drivers and jam it into the torques between the security pin and, and two of them and turn. And they'll come out quite easily without having to buy the correct bit. They are not hard to open. I think that was just to discourage people from opening these things up. But there's the there's the security bit. As you can see, it's got the, the pin in the middle. Anyway, it doesn't take much to open these up. Pretty easy to get into. Once the screws are out, top lifts off. Probably the most dangerous part of these things is the actual, oh, there's one more screw inside, is the actual. Um, metal cover it's very sharp so you gotta watch your fingers as you will slice your fingers on this it's like a knife now the, these units have been known to pop fuses for no good reason so sometimes it's just the fuse that's popped. Let's just check and see whether the fuse is popped on this. I'm imagining it probably is. Yes, the fuse is open. But why is the fuse open? That's the question. Is the fuse open because something else is shorted, such as a primary switch or something on the inverter? That's what we have to determine. This is where the interlock switches live. The pri whoops, sorry about that. Primary interlock is the switch here. The secondary interlock is down here. There's two of them. And how it operates is the primary interlock is the main switch which cuts power to the inverter board. The secondary switch is sometimes called the short switch. And what its job is to do is it's a normally closed switch. So when the door first closes, what happens is the short switch opens first. So the process of closing the door, the first thing that will happen is this switch here will open before this switch closes. So when you push in the door, that switch should be open and then when, you, when the button releases, you'll see the top switch engage. So this switch turns on, the switch here is already off. The reason that we have these two switches is if this switch were to stick in the on position and the door were to open, we want this switch to put a dead short across the line and blow the fuse. So usually when you have a switch that's failing, it's, it could very well be the primary switch has triggered the secondary switch to fail. Sometimes the secondary switch will fail on its own. Generally, if the primary switch is gone, the secondary switch also needs to be replaced. We can take the switches out to test them. Just lift the little tab up here and the switch should lift right out. So there's one switch there. I hear good snap action on that switch. Let's test it and see that it is actually working. So normally when these switches fail, they will short and then they will stay on all the time. So we're open now. Should be open now. And we're not. Let me just disconnect this because the other switch shorting can 
can certainly cause problems. Okay, now the switch is disconnected. And it should be, this is a normally open switch, so I should have no continuity whatsoever when I touch here, which I don't. And when I press the button down, I have continuity. So that tells me that this switch is good. So let's check the monitor switch or the short switch, as it's sometimes called, and see whether that switch is the one that's caused a failure. If both switches are okay, then we'll check the um, transistors on the uh, inverter board here and look for a short either on the uh, rectifier or the transistors. And if it's the inverter that's shot, this unit is not going to be repaired just because cost-wise it's cheaper to buy a new one. The same as if the magnetron is shot. Sometimes what will happen is the magnetron over here will short and take out the inverter with it. And then once that goes, the unit is, is, is toast. When these units work, they, they're, they're really a good microwave. I've got one myself, and the one that I got, I got, I found this one in the same place. It was in the recycle bin at work. And the other one, I'm, I'm hanging on to it because it's a bigger, it's a bigger unit, first of all. And it works great. I think the reason that the person scrapped it was because it became a volcano. You know, it was, uh, I think they boiled water and they neglected to realize that you can't boil water in these 1200 watt units, especially the big one with the magnetron. That they, this one here, the waveguide, the, the microwaves go in about midway up the top. Here's the waveguide here. So microwaves go in right about the middle of the cavity. The larger ones, the waveguide is actually at the bottom. So it heats very well because it heats food right in the very bottom, which is great for like casseroles and so forth and heating food that is relatively low to the, the, the turning um, uh, food turntable. The problem with those ones, if you put water in without anything in the water, in other words, pure water, if you were heating coffee, wouldn't be a problem. If you were heating water with a little stir stick in it, wouldn't be a problem. But if you're heating water, pure water, it superheats the water in the bottom of the, the the cup or the mug and the water boils and then when the water turns to steam at the bottom the water at the top is still cooler than the superheated water at the bottom just because of where the microwaves go in and it basically will launch the water out of the uh, out of the, the glass and pressure wash basically the inside and I think probably the other unit that I found that was literally brand new that's probably what happened was somebody, you know, it was, it may have been installed in a house when they bought the house and, or whatever. And, uh, because it looked like it had been installed, the trim kit and everything was still like, like in pieces with it when I found it. I still had the trim kit, portions of the trim kit attached to it. So I think it was a built-in unit. Somebody tried to heat something up, but they were heating, exploded inside became a volcano inside and scared them and they thought there was a problem with the microwave and they tossed it. Either that or um, they bought a house and it was in there and they didn't want that brand and, and scrapped it but somebody threw it in the bin. There was nothing wrong with it. I'm using it to this day and it's a fantastic microwave which all these, uh, these Panasonic inverters are all very good when they work. When they don't work, well that's a little different story. So we just undo the clips here and remove the two switches. It's this back switch is the one that I'm interested in because it is the monitor switch. The closer of the two switches, this one here, this one here, all it does, this is also another normally open switch, as you can see. And all this switch does is this just turns the timer on and off. So when the door is open, it stops the timer from counting down. This is the monitor switch. And what this one's job to do is this one's a normally closed switch. This one here should give me a short when the button is up and the short should clear when the button goes down. So there's our short, right? And I press down the switch and the short goes away. So monitor switch is not damaged, which means this unit did not fail due to one of the switches. So one of two things has happened on this unit. Either A, the fuse just was weak and failed, which believe it or not, happens a lot on these units. It's an 18 amp fuse, and even though most people are running them on a 15 amp circuit, and it doesn't even draw 15 amps because it, it would trip your circuit breaker um, before the fuse blew, um, a lot of times these fuses, they fail 
because the little contacts right here, the little contacts, springs, build up a little bit of resistance, which over time heats up the end of the fuse, and you can see it here, you can almost see it bubbling out here, it heats up the fuse, and then the fuse pops for no other reason. And there's a very good chance that, that is all that's wrong with this microwave and it got thrown out for a blown fuse. Now, I can test the transistors on this thing and see if they're popped, but I think what I'm going to do is, now that I've tested the fuses, I'm just gonna, or tested the switches, I'm just gonna put a new fuse in this thing and see if it works. So let me put the switches back in first. So the short switch goes in first. It goes in like this. flashlight so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure that my switch is going over both of the tabs, which it is. Okay, good. Okay, it should just pop right in. Like that. And then the second switch just goes in behind it here. Now that switch is in place and it's activated by, this, this is the, the door hook here where that goes in like that. That's what activates the switch. So when the door closes, it activates both of the switches just like that. Okay, so both of those switches, or all three of those switches are activating as they should. Okay, new fuse installed. It'd be great if it's just the fuse on this thing, I tell you. So let's just see, either it's gonna do something or it's going to blow up. Just plugged in the power and it hasn't done anything yet. That's a good sign, no smoke. Got one of those mirrored finishes on the front. You know what's weird is I don't see, I hear it beeping, I don't see a display. Interesting. Why do I not see a display? Maybe I have to set it. Let's try clock. Where's the clock button on this thing? Oh, there's the display. It's really dim. Holy smoke, this thing's dim. Is it because it's too bright in here? It's an LCD screen. i turn out some lights and might be able to see this thing. Man, this display is dim. They call this the prestige unit. See what I mean? The display is, is almost completely dark. If I press function, it says hello. This is ridiculous. All I can see is myself in the display. <laughs> like what, I gotta turn out all the lights to read this thing? Like the display is, it's backlit with LEDs, but man, it's sure not very bright. See what I mean? Child lock on off. The display on this thing is really quite dim. I don't know whether there's a, an adjustment for the display brightness. I mean, it's 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 easier to read than it is on camera, that's for sure. But uh, it's it's pretty dim. I got a mug full of water here. We'll put this in here and heat it up for a bit and see what happens. See, I can see the display now. If I don't have all the lights on in here, I can see the display. It says 501. It's not very bright, but man. It's not what I'm used to. The, the display on my microwave in the house is so bright you can see it from across the room. 
And that's what I would expect to have to strain your eyes to see this. And now one, it's an LCD screen, which is a joke. Microwave should have vacuum fluorescent displays. And if not, an LED is the next best thing. But these backlit LCDs, I'm not a big fan of them. But it needs to be brighter than that. But I'm not keeping this thing anyway. This microwave I'm going to give away because they're not worth anything to sell. If it works, I'll find, I'll find someone to take it off my hands. So let's just uh, heat this thing up here. Power level, I think it starts out on 10, so I'll put it on for two minutes and hit start. And hasn't blown anything yet. Now I'm running on a 15 amp circuit. My circuit breaker on my power bar is 15 amps as well as the, the circuit for my my um, bench here is 15 amps. And there's a bunch of stuff running on there. The TV, like the monitor that I'm viewing this, uh, my camera on. My camera is actually running on the same circuit. So it's not drawing that much power because if it was drawing more than 15 amps, we'd be tripping circuits. But that 18 amp fuse that they put in uh, at the factory, what happens, as I explained before, is the uh, the fuse gets warm, and they eventually fail. And that just went out. It oh, it tripped, it tripped my power bar. So this thing's drawing 15 amps, it's drawing more than 15 amps. It tripped the fuse. It tripped the circuit breaker on my power bar. Interesting. So we know these units do draw at least 15 amps because it popped my circuit breaker, but or it popped the circuit breaker on my power bar, uh, which has other things plugged into it as well. It, the water is warm. I'll plug this directly into power, not going through my power bar, and uh, we'll heat it up again and see whether it can make the water boil. Got my industrial strength extension cord two minutes start now remember I'm on the same circuit now as I was before um, but I'm just not going through the power bar and we'll see how hot the water was actually quite warm in the time that it ran what's concerning is that fan seems to be slowing down a bit the uh, cooling fan. I guess that's the way these things operate. But not blowing the fuse. 18 amp fuse. It's on a 15 amp circuit. Heavy duty power cord this time. Plugged directly into the wall. But again, same circuit that my other stuff is on. So maybe it'll trip the circuit breaker this time. But these units here do draw close to 15 amps. That's why they run with an 18 amp fuse because this is a 1200 watt microwave. So they draw a lot of power. Well, let's let this thing run and see how hot it gets the water. It should have this, it's, it's a big a big mug of water, but it should have it up to a rolling boil in two minutes. I should point out that had the inverter been at fault, it would have blown the fuse immediately had the inverter been shorted. We wouldn't have any heat. So because it's heating the water, we know the magnetron's good, we know the inverter is good, and that the only failure on this was the fuse due to fatigue on the fuse itself because the switches were fine. There, it's gone for two minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. <laughs> it's, it's scalding hot, but yeah, it's working. Very hot water, um, that's all it was on this one. I'm going to throw it back together, put it up on Craigslist, and sell it for 20 bucks. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. 
now that I've scalded my hand here. Bye for now. This one's an NNT5838, I think it says there. Anyway, um, 2003 is when this one was made. Open power, 1250 watts. It says 1450 watts is what this thing draws. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's heating fine now. Just a fuse popped. Now I'll put it back together and get rid of it.